Thank you. I want to thank uh, Pat and all the folks from SSI. This, is, uh, this has been quite an event, and, and just, this is no small undertaking getting this all pulled together. So uh, I really do appreciate the opportunity to be here and, and uh, speak with you folks. Um, that said, we're with, uh, with Altair. Uh, I've been working with Pat for a few years. We'll just put it in a few years. I don't want to say how long, a few years. Uh, and uh, the opportunity came about for us to uh, attack the uh, lifting and analysis portion of what's going on in the yards. And we have an NSRP project. Uh, we have another team member, member sitting over here, Deepak, he's uh, project lead. But uh, we just want to touch a little bit on what Altair does, uh, our products, and then uh, focus primarily on the project itself and what we're trying to accomplish with it. So. This is, uh, in general, this is the, the, uh, the focus of our organization. Read it for yourself, but we really try and uh, solve problems for our customers. Um, it, it's, it's not technology for the sake of technology itself, but technology is a tool to help you solve your problems. So that's really what our focus is on. Um, and we have technologies that, that span uh, the, the, what I'll call the, the grunt work of uh, strict FEA, and then we go into machine learning and that sort of thing as well, high performance computing. So. To give you a little background on our organization, we've been around for 33, 34 years now. Um, we are a worldwide organization. We have offices throughout the world. Um, we just went public within the last year, I guess. And uh, so the revenues there are from uh, our, our last annual report. A little bit more than 2,000 people that are involved with Altair throughout the world, and uh, you can see the number of customers and users that we have. We're headquartered in Troy, Michigan, so when we started back in the mid 80s, uh, if you're in Michigan, you work for basically one of, if not all three companies, which would be Ford, Chrysler, and GM. Uh, but since then, uh, our world's changed quite a bit, and there's Really, not too many uh, vertical areas that we're not involved in at this point in time. So, that's a, gives you a rough idea of some of the companies that we're working with. When you look at Altair as a company, uh, there's, there's really three major areas that we cover one being software, uh, another one being staffing, which is really a very focused um, portion of our organization, and the third, which We've titled innovation. We actually have two companies that are part of Altair that are um, toggled as a, a, a lighting company that manufactures uh, very specific types of lighting. And then WEYV is a, I'll call it an internet radio type magazine. It's a, it's a communication really company. Um, but it allows you to access uh, music and, and magazines and that sort of thing. So, where we're going to focus today primarily is in the software area, and of four different classifications of software up there, uh, the majority of our work is going to be focused in HyperWorks, which is really our marketing product. When you think of HyperWorks, you're, you're thinking of a suite of tools, a suite of capabilities. We're probably best known for a Part of that hyperwork suite known as HyperMesh is a meshing tool that's widely used. Um, the salesman in me is going to come out now and say that uh, it's probably pound for pound or dollar for dollar, it's probably the best pre processing tool in the market with respect to meshing technology, with respect to size of model. It's, it's quite frankly a, a very capable tool. But coupled with that, uh, are a whole host of solvers that we have available as part of the suite. Bonding, visualization, uh, like 
I said, that's, that's really where we made our name years ago. That's where the company sort of started uh, from a development perspective. And then uh, the, the solution suite, which is an ongoing development effort on our part, uh, touches on everything from basic structural analysis, linear, nonlinear, fluid dynamics, thermal, electromagnetics. Uh, there's really not too much that we don't touch on. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm going to give uh, credit to the folks who made most of these slides, which is going to be SSI and Pat Roberts or, or Pat David, who stepped out here a minute ago. Um, a lot of these slides that you're going to see now are, are based on presentations or, or powerful presentations that we've made in the past, but I, I think they tell the story, lift ship, and, and really give you an idea of what we're trying to accomplish by developing this solution. If you've never done anything with NSRP, then this is all new to you, but for anybody, and I would imagine most everybody in the room has done something with NSRP, these are the yards that are involved with NSRP. Now, LiftShip was a, an idea, a tool that uh, developed out of the need to be, I'll say, more quantitative in the way in which uh, the yards are handling their lift. Uh, years ago, and it's probably still the case in some of the yards, in part of the yard, um, there's probably somebody that is the, I'll, I'll say lift foreman or lift supervisor, that has somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 45 years of experience doing lifts, and they can walk up to whatever it is you want to pick up, look at it, and say, okay, we need to reinforce this here, here, and here, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna pick it up at these different points, and there goes your lift. Well, trying to be a little bit more quantitative, trying to give uh, the yards the ability to uh, really narrow down and, and, and limit some of the rework and some of the problems that they might run into because. That experience doesn't always account for everything that's going on with the lift. Uh, that, that's really where this came from. Now, you'll, you'll see here, if I bend down a little bit, um, you'll see the team that we're working with, which is uh, Austin Bollinger, Conrad, BT Alter. They're, they're the yards that are involved in this project. Uh, ship architects, obviously, uh, and ATA, ATA Engineering. And why this project is, I think, unique is that ATA is, is working with um, with VMAP in the development of their solution. We, of course, are working with, with Altair Hyperworks. So it's not a, the, the solution is not going to be unique to the Hyperworks at the, end of the, at the end of the program. Regardless of what you're using out there in the shipyards, I mean, we'd love to have you using Hyperworks, obviously, but the project, the idea of the project is to get an answer, get a solution. Get a tool that you guys can use as soon as we're finished with it. So. <coughs> and, and <coughs> frankly, this, this ties back to the presentation that we did for NSRP. These are the reasons that we felt this project made sense to the ours. And uh, really, it's to it's to attack costs and reduce the effort to, to, to be a little bit more quantitative in, in the way you're approaching your list. And ideally, the idea is to, to reduce errors. Um, NASCO has done a ton of uh, rigging and, and lifting NSRP work in the past, and uh, our goal is to incorporate that as well at some point, if not in this particular project, but perhaps in the future. The lift proposal, you, you see here some of the things that we've done. We, we did a little project, this was actually done with NASCO, where uh, in this particular image, you can see that that was what was originally planned by the lifting team uh, with respect to reinforcing that particular lift and using the, the technology that Altair has and optimizing based on the lift parameters that we were given um, to reduce
reduce, and we were using deflection on this, but to reduce the deflection and the reinforcement uh, configuration was changed a bit, and, and that's shown in the, in the picture to the right there. Um, we, we think that uh, the technology that we're developing is going to have a big impact on it. That once you get it in your hands, you're going to be able to put it to good use. Really, the reason the whole crux of this this effort is to try and eliminate uh, you ever getting pictures like this to show up someplace or headlines like this uh, ever again. That's really what the focus is, is to try and give you a, a solution that, uh, that allows you to eliminate the problem as best we can. I'm going to turn this over to Josh. He's going to talk a little bit more specifics about what we're doing as far as the project is concerned. And give you a little insight into our developer process. Obviously, we have 
the model looks like this structure. And one of the first questions is how do we get that out? How do we get all that data out into Hyperworks or into ATA's uh, products? So basically, for the last couple of quarters, we've been hammering out. Uh, this has been one of the bigger details. We have a lot of other ones that we've been working on. Uh, and so we finally decided that uh, SSI has been great at developing um, on their side to output uh, what we have here is uh, the actual physical geometry of the parts via an IGS or a step file. And in such a, such a way that uh, they can be brought into uh, the Hyperworks environment. So that's just the geometry information. There's a plethora of other information that also defines these uh, parts that build up the ship. And uh, thickness properties, hierarchy properties, uh, material properties, and, and so forth. So there's a lot of, a lot of information that uh, can be exported. So that's where these other XML files, these ASCII files come in, that uh, SSI is going to export these file types, uh, materials, uh, also loading conditions, and then also center gravity, uh, something that we got some feedback from the shipyards of interest for them. Uh, once we take those, we can import those into uh, our works. And this kind of just shows like a workflow of, of how we decided to organize and bring in the information. And really the part of the GUID, the ID of the part, uh, really governs how uh, it brings in the hierarchy is brought in. Uh, after that's brought in, there's a property file uh, which has the GUID information in it, so it's kind of associated and then Property has a hierarchy of material name. The material name will get pulled in, uh, will pull the material from the XML file, and then you get your basic um, inputs for performing the front end analysis. So I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other ones that we may want to bring in based on should there feedback, which you can. Uh, but really, the, the goal was to, um, I guess, a lot of this work honestly been on SSI these past couple of months because uh, we've been wanting to make sure that we're getting all the capturing all the information from ship constructor as needed. Um, because once it's out in type works, uh, then we can prioritize which what information is necessary. Uh, so this is a sample model. Uh, I've actually seen this in other slides, so it's pretty popular, of uh, the model that we're using to initially generate uh, the process automation portion and then just verify that all the information is probably imported from ship constructor, uh, the geometry, the properties, material, and so forth. So it's not, I mean, it's not exactly a small model. It's several thousand parts. Uh, the performance has, has been good. Uh, but this is what we're working for. So we have a lot of plates. We do have pipes. Uh, a lot of piping systems. We've got HVAC systems. So the idea is uh, to kind of just give an initial test to see how the importing works, how the information comes in, uh, if we perform any type of initial um, ideization, such as converting the solids to surfaces. Uh, so just to kind of give an initial go at um, uh, running the model in high meshes, this right here is a step where we've surfaced all the solids and then stitched or joined the plates together. And it's based on a proximity. So you can define either a thickness proximity of the plate or you can find an actual distance. Um, so clean up like a stitching tolerance. So majority of the plates uh, work well and then there's a few areas where you can go in there and manually and up and adjust it. So um, by no means is this the, the end result. Obviously we need to do some uh, meshing of the part, quality checks, uh, boundary condition setups, and, and so forth. So this is kind of the stage we're at now. We're not, that, not nearly at the completion of the project, uh, but just to kind of illustrate the process we're working through. Uh, if we zoom in on this, this corner down here, uh, just to kind of get a closer look at what's actually going on. Uh, this is the solid geometry, so you can see how the plates kind of interact and touch. Assuming there would be welds in particular locations. Uh, and when we perform the, the mid surfacing, we get the, the plates, and we get a little bit more separation, and then that stitching that I was talking about uh, kind of cleans 
things up and we have certain color coding for how the geometry and topology connects and whatnot. So uh, we can correct those if we want to unstitch them, we want to bring them back together. Uh, if we want to adjust them within, we'll see if we can do. Uh, but this is just, <coughs> this isn't part of the automation. This is kind of just what hypermesh is already capable of doing. So part of the automation would be to uh, maybe remove that hole or simplify that hole or simplify some of the geometry. So again, not forcing the new user possibly to have to learn uh, the several steps in order to accomplish this and other kind of some of the options that you have to learn. And then I just just throw on a quick mesh just to kind of see how the uh, mesh generation for terminal topology. So I'm assuming this moment size is a little too large, possibly, or too small. Uh, from some of the other pocket size my goodness. So this might be a fairly fine mesh. So that can be adjusted. But I just wanted to see how high pressure was performing in interpretive topology. So overall, it's, it's good. Good. Uh, the automation process will make it even faster and better and easier to use. Um, so now for open shorts. So forgive me, but this is kind of a nice summary of uh, the shipyard feedback, which governs our objectives in in this project. So a lot of these we endeavor to automate. Uh, thankfully, uh, Bollinger and also have given us some really good feedback. I think we have like a six-page questionnaire that we have to go through and we can answer some questions. And for the most part, they've been on the same page, so these kind of bullet points is uh, obviously we want to utilize the data exchange for chip construction, and uh, that would be the part geometry, properties assembly, uh, lifting points orientation, and then uh, they talked about wanting an option to import custom CGs or modified CG parts. Uh, so as possibly a model is moving, the CG can shift, so let's see that that scenario. And also converting uh, motors or other heavy equipment to just mass elements. And uh, they've chosen to manually attach those, uh, those masses to the model, how they deem fit. Uh, that's not a problem. And then we also have an option to convert possibly the piping systems and HVAC to the like elements, so we're not trying to model them as, as shells or solids for time savings. Uh, so those are a couple options we want to give them. Uh, obviously, as I illustrated, the geometry simplification, such as like, featuring uh, wrap holes, uh, fillets, uh, just simple geometry may not be very important. Uh, to the overall system analysis. That's kind of what we're looking at right now is the local analysis of how the, the whole uh, lifting unit will perform, how it will reflect, uh, not necessarily looking at hot spots, uh, which is, is very much possible. Uh, generating a quality mesh uh, without necessarily needing the user to go through every single element of the model is going to be really important, uh, at least to give them a or some feedback on how well uh, quality of the mesh is, sizing of elements, and those types of things. Um, you don't want to be able, you don't want to have to blast the model with millions and millions of elements to, to get a general global solution. Uh, so, and then they both said you know, they want to do a linear buckling analysis. Uh, yielding is not acceptable, so it's left a little easier. They want to have the option for setting up multiple what if scenarios. That was part of that one of the XML files where they can import multiple vectors for loading conditions and so forth. Um, and then at the end of the day, after this, it's like so you spent all this time, uh, so what? So you run the analysis, um, part of this automation is to give the automated report to address their specific questions of do we lift this unit the way we set it up or we don't need. Uh, here's an Excel spreadsheet, and then I'll see here's some contours of the results. Spots and why we should be lifting it. Uh, and then, yeah, if, if it is no go, there should be something in the reporting to assist them in locations of what racing should be applied. So, so I think we're wrapping the second quarter. So, and this will be our next uh, phase of work is to continue to acquire 
she get our feedback. I think we sent out to like half a dozen shippers and we were waiting for their feedback. We got two, so again, we're, we're still waiting. Uh, we want to finalize the ship and start the data out the formats just to make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, the ship are happy with what ship and start is outputting, and then that can help us finalize uh, what the data we're working with. Uh, select a common model that the shipyards are ideally the shipyards will send us that model uh, from something they're working on. Uh, otherwise, internally with SSI to get ourselves, we can uh, agree upon a common model and develop use cases with loading, lifting, and moving. And then we would finalize our workflow and we would develop it of the readers to properly read it and all that data into the high information environment and basically set up the model to begin the process of reprocessing. So that's, that's the technical portion, so thank you for